right now, I want to welcome everybody to Barnard Cowboy Church. You that are watching this online or not live, we're right here at the Chuck Wagon Cafe. We've got some great food going on. Everybody get something to eat? Yeah. Yeah? You can tell, you can tell we're country church because we've met in that. Right? Yeah. So, uh, does everybody like what you ate? Yeah. If you got a complaint department, just they ain't got one. Just have to give it to somebody else. So, I got a, I got a, where's Roy at? He went yonder. Oh, ho, ho, ho. He's changing shirts. <laughs> I hope so. All right, when he comes back in, everybody give him a hard time about his shirt. We're giving him a hard time about his purple shirt. But anyway, uh, y'all enjoying Melanie and Roy? Give him a hand. We're glad you're here tonight. you, Mike. And, uh. I got I got to get Roy up here first thing. Is that okay, you might we, I got something I got to do with him something when he comes back in. Now don't eat the peach cobbler. It ain't no good. Just leave it all there. I'll take care of it later. No, right? that last night. Who made that anyway? Did you make that, Mary? Nobody. Nobody. It's good, wasn't it? I take that. I took some of them brown beans and that taco soup. Boy, that was something to eat. Woo! So that was good. The food is good, isn't it? So, next week, guess what? Y'all get the week off. No cooking. So, Does that mean you're coming to my house? I'm going to Oklahoma Tuesday morning. Rick's going to cover cover for me on Tuesday night, and I thank him for that. But uh, I'm waiting on Roy. i got to get Roy in here. Where'd he go? Here he comes. All right. I got a special request for him to sing a song. Come on, come on. He's a mess. Yeah. He's a mess. I'm gonna bring this group, all these people, back for the Cowboy Festival this fall. Y'all like that, all right? Yeah. Come on, Roy. Hey, Roy. I got a request. Come here. Come on, don't be a lolly, lolly gagging. Didn't your mama teach you about that? <laughs> Have you got a guitar handy? You Have you mine. got a guitar handy? No. You don't? You can use mine. Right. You mean, we got, I got somebody wants you to sing a song. Okay. Are you ready? John You see Charlene back there? <laughs> <laughs> It may not be. Remember that John Deere Green song? You want to pick up? Hey, are you okay? If, are you okay if we sing a country song real quick? Yeah. We, we, we've been picking on Charlene about that John Deere Green song about Charlene. Oh, that must be a little bit funny. Are you ready, Charlene? We got a mic on here. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Yeah. Talk in it. This was unrehearsed, so nobody laughed. We're not live yet, are we? Yeah, yeah well, you're right. This will be a good time for y'all to go to the bathroom, go to the kitchen, and get something to eat. Oh, there's my coffee cook. <laughs> I wonder what I did with my coffee. I think it's my coffee. No. And John Deere Green. And there's three feet high. He wrote Billy Bob Love Something, something. So we're in the we're in the market for a Billy Bob. If anybody knows a Billy Bob, we're gonna start there. If it's just Billy, maybe if it's just Bob. Charlie, we love you. I'm sorry. I, this wasn't my idea. Sorry for our listening audience on Facebook. Am I introducing you, Banks? I guess Since I'm here. You ain't gonna, you don't, are you Billy Bob? Where's the Billy Bob? I didn't practice. I didn't know we was doing that tonight. Ah, uh, boy. Okay. Well, you can, you can do the you Yeah, I'm... Did y'all like that? Woo! <laughs> Just unplug it. And the whole town said that he should have used red. But it looked good to Charlene in <laughs> John Deere Green. <laughs> so this next group we're going to introduce you to tonight is uh, the reason that me and Melanie's even up here. They, when they found out we were 
full-time ministry and going around different churches and giving our testimony and singing. He said, man, he said, I'm not telling you what to do, man. He said, but you're a cowboy church people. We play at cowboy churches and you're, you're a cowboy church person. And I'm like, I love cowboys. I love ranching. I love, I love all the things about it except horses. <laughs> horses don't like me. I don't know. So we got to deal. I don't ride them. They don't ride me. <laughs> but um, it's because of Terry and Jennifer is, is how we found out about you guys. And they said, you need to come to the thing that we did last fall and just fell in love with you guys and was invited back this year and hope to have a relationship moving forward. So I won't cut in no more of their time. It's uh, y'all make welcome to the Eubanks. idea to make them sound real good. <laughs> you know, we were at a church not too long ago. And, um, little old lady came up to me and said, I thought y'all were saved. And I said, um, well, ma'am, we are. All three of us. And she said, well, what's all this carrying on and laughing and joking? And I said, well, um, I think the Lord says it's okay that we, we joke around and, you know, I think he has some fun too so from time to time. But I said, you know, if you're wandering around with such a long face all the time and you're sad, you're upset, you do not have religion or Jesus in your life. You have indigestion. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, but no, you know, we have something to be happy about. Right. And I think it's okay to laugh and joke from time to time and tease Roy about his purple shirt. Um, I think the Lord is okay with that. And so we're going to start off with a happy song that I know y'all know tonight. It's Victory in Jesus. Plunge me to 
thank God, but I'm thankful I have victory in Jesus. I'm thankful for that victory that He gives all of us. Not just me, not just you. I mean, everybody. It's, all, it's available to everybody. And um, I asked Terry to do this song, um, this next song. It's kind of newer to us. Um, it's been around for a long time. Um, and I, I get weepy when I think about this, but I cannot fathom what the Lord went through when He hung on that cross for me and gave me that victory. I mean, I can't fathom because what He went through is not something that we will probably ever experience in this lifetime, ever. I mean, I don't know. You know, things could get crazier than they already are. But I cannot imagine hanging on a cross for, for one person, let alone everyone. And just everything that He went through you know, being scorned and mocked and abused. And this song talks about that and how we'll never understand what we put Him through and that the weight of our sins, what it did to Him. But they used three rusty nails and an old dogwood tree. And this, I hope you love this song like we do.
No, he just changed them. But see, now I'm not working. Give me one second. One. <laughs> well, I'm done, but the computer ain't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor Charlene's never going to come back. <laughs> Oh, she's just kidding. <laughs> um, well, is there anybody in this room that we have not met? Try it. Fantastic. Okay, maybe it'll work. Um, no, we love, 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 love y'all. And um, I think we've invited some more people to come with us um, in the fall for the cowboy gathering. So we love dragging people up here. And so we appreciate y'all loving on them. And uh, I'm so thankful that Roy and Melanie have been able to come and share their hearts with y'all. And um, we just adore them and think they're they're fantastic. And so we're glad that they've been able to tell y'all about themselves and everything that they do and they've been through. And um, we're just proud to call them friends. So um, this next song, it, I was joking earlier, we call it a half a song. It's very short, but it packs a huge, huge punch. And, um, you know, Melanie was talking and Roy was talking about healing last night. And um, I love that verse about um, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And that's what this song is about. You know, and so no matter what you're going through, just remember that that joy or that healing will be there in the morning.
You have no idea. <laughs> um, Roy and I were in a band together a long time true. ago. I don't think they he wanted to hear not. about that. They wanted to hear about Emma. Um, <laughs> that purple shirt. She's yeah. wearing a purple shirt too, though. Yeah, it's not as loud, but um, oh, it doesn't light up. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, there's a couple things that I could brag on her. So everyone knows this is Emma. She turned 15 in December. And, um... Okay. Okay, well, the list is getting longer. Um, so a couple of things that we're really proud about is um, a few weeks ago, uh, she got to um, be a page. Um, how, how many of y'all actually live in Arkansas? <laughs> okay, fantastic. So... She got to be a page for the Arkansas Senate and for the day. And so uh, she was with our state senator for a day and um, got to do a bunch of really cool things. And uh, it was just, uh, she was the only one for him that day. And so he, um, he signed her up for all sorts of extra stuff so that she would get a better experience. So um, we went with her that day and got to tour the Capitol while she was doing other things. And so we were really proud of her for that. Um, and she actually enjoyed it, said she'd be willing to do it again. Um, and then um, she was on a beef quiz ball team uh, with her 4-H group, so we got to go to uh, Fayetteville, and they competed, um, four-person team, they, out of, I don't even remember how many teams were there, but they got in the top six. So um, she's been doing that, and then um, this past week, uh, we had a 4-H event, and she got I don't even know how many awards for different things that she's done this year with 4-H. Um, they just elected her treasurer um, for one of her clubs, and um, but she got to sing the national anthem while we were there too. And um, I, we are a pretty patriotic family, and um, we absolutely love to hear our baby girl sing the national anthem, and she did it flawlessly. And um, that's true. And then next week. Um, we got selected um, uh, to go to Montgomery, Alabama. They have a huge rodeo there. It's the SLE Rodeo. And um, I'm <laughs> and uh, anyway, so we, uh, we are going Saturday night. They've sent us our tickets, and uh, we are the Saturday night national anthem. And I've talked to a few people, and um, it's always, you know, it's nice when people compliment you or whatever, but... Everybody has just said, we've been blown away by y'all's national anthem, and so they're really excited that we're coming, but more importantly, we're excited. Um, they, do, they do have a church on Sunday morning, which we got to talking about that, and we're hopefully going to maybe get to go back and do church with them. So, you know, God opens those doors in different ways, and um, I'm just thankful for this door because it's a... He's so cute. He's saying good dog. Yeah, no, shut up, lady. Um, and... Uh, he got even more excited when I said that. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's amazing how the Lord works and how he opens these doors for different things. Because we're talking about a... <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about a coliseum full of hundreds of people, you know, and uh, if we get the chance to go back and do church with them, it's just the Lord. It's like last night, like, won't he do it? Because he will, you know? And uh, so we're really excited to do that. But um, but I know everybody is always way more interested in hearing about Emma's life than ours. So, um, But I will say be in prayer for us because she goes at the end of this month to take her driving test. <laughs> I'm not sure we're prepared for this. No. So we do need lots of prayer. And bumpers. Yeah, and, and what? Bumpers. bumpers. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Kind of like what they have at the bowling alley for children. I like this idea. Okay. But yeah, we, uh, she, uh, she's, she's a little nervous about taking it. She's been busy doing other things and y'all, she's killing it in school. She's got straight A's. And, um, and so we just, we couldn't She's still on. ranked number one in her class though. Yeah. We couldn't be, heard that joke. <laughs> we couldn't be more proud that. of her. So, um, but you know, we, um, it's just neat to also watch your kid growing up and people ask her all the time to come do different church events or lead worship at this event. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm proud of her for everything that she does. But the fact that people want her to come and lead worship and to draw others to Jesus, that's what makes me proud. Hey, I got one more thing. I'm being all serious. I know what she wanted me to talk about. When we first, first time we yep. came here, uh, she had 
approached us about wanting to go to a leadership camp. Y'all remember that? Yep. yep. She had a brand new CD over there, and I told her she sells those CDs that will raise money to pay for that. Y'all remember all that? Yep. yep. This church put her over yes. the top on the second day she ever had it. So she was able to go to that camp. Now, while you're clapping, yesterday, mm -hmm. yesterday she got an email. She don't even have something this year. They gave her a scholarship to go to the same camp. So she's going to Very proud. But, but, she does have some for sale. Oh, yeah, there's she does. <laughs> so we still got to get rid of them. The Frisbees and coasters will only last for so long. And we did bring a brand new CD with us. We uh, did. Gene actually brought them today, so we hadn't had them in our hands until this afternoon. So, so we got. We'll do a bunch off of it in the Tomorrow morning. morning yeah. uh, we're gonna do one more song, get out of the way, and let Roy come up. Uh, I think we've done this one here before. If not, we're about to. Oh. <laughs> Coffee. Here's your coffee. Oh, that's mine. Oh, no. no that's well, that's your coffee. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you were right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll share. No, I, I still don't know where my coffee went. I'm not buying mine. Well, y'all, how, how many have enjoyed the, the service so far? We <laughs> guys are. Incredible. There used to be a show called That's Incredible. Oh, yeah. Wasn't it? Something like that. Well, y'all, I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer and then we'll, we'll talk here a little bit. Lord, thank you so much for another night. We can just come and uh, hear from you and through music and uh, food and uh, just great fellowship. Be with this church as they grow and they point people to you. Be with tonight's uh, message. Just let us apply it to our lives and uh, use it for your service and your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> I might have to put my glasses on. Y'all don't make, make fun of my... It's okay to make fun of my shirt. Just don't make fun of my glasses. <laughs> These belong to some lady somewhere. She laid them down. I picked them up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you've been paying attention or been here the last couple nights, with, you know, our 3-H ministry is hope healing, and happiness. 
And we covered hope the first night. Hope is only in Jesus Christ. And you that you have to have your hope centered on Him. Healing, we talked about um, hurts. We've all been hurt before. We've all had something that, you know, been in, been in our crawl, so to speak, that we need to get rid of. And uh, we talked about that last night, releasing those hurts over to Him. And tonight is the, the best part, I think, is the happiness. And like Melanie said, you know, we got the hope, we got the healing, and we thought happiness was just going to be automatic. Well, it wasn't automatic. <clears throat> because, you know, happiness is a choice. And we have the choice to be happy or not. But if you don't have Christ in the, in the center of your life, you're never going to experience true happiness or peace or joy, so to speak. So I, I've seen a neat piece that uh, Rick Warren, the guy that wrote Purpose Driven Life, he said happiness is a, is a choice, like I said, and, and joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. So that's that was his definition of happiness or joy. And that's pretty pretty much sums it up. When we have a self-centered life, we're always unhappy. Because self is never going to satisfy you the way Jesus can satisfy you. Amen. You know, Christ-centered life is 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 where the satisfaction comes in. You know, the other life is just temporarily pleasure. You know, and, it, and the world promises that so much, you know, if you watch TV commercials, you know, you get the, you get the gal wearing little or nothing, you know, uh, holding a cold beer and on the lake, you know. But what they don't show is that same girl that evening sick to her stomach, messing the guy's boat up. <laughs> or worse, falling and hitting her head, getting a concussion. Or falling overboard in the search boats out there looking for. They don't show that part. And yeah, that's just one one of the world's hopes. But you know, even if you have Christ in the center of your life, you know, it's not a trouble free life. You know, because he does say, you know, we will experience troubles here on earth. That's just the way it is. <clears throat> but whatever we're focused on, if we're focused on him, we can you know, we're, that's that's get, getting our I heard him out there telling the horses today. Look where you're going. I, I think Randy was saying, look look where you're going. Because that's where the horse will go. And that's so important. You have to look at Jesus and follow Him. Follow His lead. Or you'll be all over the place. You'll be like a ping pong ball bouncing down a hallway. Are you fully, fully surrendered? Are you fully, have, have you gave every area of your life to Christ? You know, a lot of times we, we trust Him with our soul, but we don't want to trust Him with our life. And that's that's what uh, held me up so long and so many years was I was so self-focused, I wanted to do my thing. And that's not happiness. I mean, you, you don't get happiness by doing, doing your thing. Now, if your thing aligns with God's thing and it's His will, then there's true happiness in that. Like, you saw them up here singing and smiling. That's their passion. That's their uh, talent that God's blessed them with. And when you're doing it, yeah, like the lady said, I mean, how, how can y'all be saved? Y'all are laughing, cutting up, and carrying on. <laughs> it's kind of unbelievable. I didn't tell this story, but my mom called me a few weeks ago and said, uh, hey, I just want to let you know I was saved tonight at church. And I thought, I, the whole time growing up, I thought my mom was saved. And she said, I'm being baptized next Sunday. Hallelujah. I'd like for you to come. And this was a few weeks ago. So we went to her church. <clears throat> it's a start. Well, it's a missionary Baptist church. And it, it's a great church. But they don't clap. And there's a recovered alcoholic friend of mine there. They wanted to see my mom be baptized. And he'd been through John 3.16, if y'all are familiar with that. Uh, and, you know, he just celebrates the Lord. And he's about three rows behind me and the pastor. And they had a lot that was going to be baptized that Sunday morning. He said, well, folks, we're just going to carry over this morning. We're going to have 
17 baptisms. And he's back there. And I knew it was him back there clapping. So when he said, okay, y'all play a few songs, we'll be right out. And so I walked back there and said, sir, you go ahead and keep that clapping down. He said, that's pretty bad when you can't honor the Lord and celebrate 17 baptism in his own house. Hallelujah. And people were turning around, I can't believe he's saying this. <laughs> so me and him get up, we go outside. And the preacher's son, which was a deputy there in town, you know, they're packing, they're, they're the security. We got a problem here. No, we don't have a problem. I said, the problem is, you know, they're not celebrating, you know, the Lord. But that's y'all's problem, not our problem. <laughs> so we come back in there. He said, your mama's first up. So we're watching, and he puts her under. Me and Keith clap. I said his name. I'm sorry. Keith's watching. And about two more people. Uh -huh. Next one goes under. Me and Keith clap. About four more. Next one goes under. Me and him, and about eight more. Before it was over, we had got to about halfway up the church because we were sitting towards the back. But that's that's to be celebrated. I mean, if you can't shout hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, it's just, he's like, I, I will not be back here. He said, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can't edit that out. But if you're one of those churches, I apologize for you but because you're missing out. If you can't clap, I mean, don't clap for the entertainers, you know, the people up here singing. They're singing to honor God. Amen. That's why we sing. Now, there's been a time we were wanting to honor ourselves, but not anymore. You know, you clap because it touched your heart. You were blessed. You were, if you want to say amen or hallelujah, preach your own brother or whatever. I mean, that's, that's, I'm so far off these notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that I'm so far off. I'm like you music church. Yeah. Happiness, happiness does not come from money, jobs, relationships with other people, or anything this world can offer. True happiness only comes from having a fully surrendered relationship with Jesus Christ and walking close to Him in His will. There's a... I got a little story about... I, you know, you listen to your conscience or listen to the Lord when He speaks to you. I knew, I, I had been laid off from a job and was without work for a little while, but I was picking up little odd jobs here and there. And, you know, I had a uh, family and was trying to make it. And this guy says, man, you signed up for unemployment. I said, you worked all those years and paid all that in. And in my heart, everything about that was saying no. You're able body, you can get up, you can work, and you're working, you're providing. Don't sign up for that. And I'm like, and he just kept on. He said, man, you paid in all those years. And I listened to him against what I, my heart was telling me to do. And I signed up for it. I had to report in each week how much I was making. I had to show my phone calls I was making. That was more work than just working. <laughs> and plus, I was still working. I was working for this 18-wheeler uh, repair shop, and he was paying me by the jobs I brought in. I was outside sales for him. and So he'd pay me, and I'd report it on my deal, you know, what I made, because it'd be like two weeks. There was like a delay, you know. Well, the government decided to audit my account. And... So he, he had to send in what he paid me, and then they compared it to what I told him I made, and it didn't match because it was like this. I was reporting it, but it was like weeks later, a couple weeks later, and they made me pay every bit of that money back. And I'm like, I should have listened to my gut, you know. I should have listened to the Lord. He was telling me, Roy, don't do that. Don't You don't need to do that. Don't do that. And I listened anyway, but... So you got to listen when the Lord lays something on you like that. Yeah. I mean, even even though it seemed good on the outside to most people, I was I was providing, and God was providing, you know, jobs. I was, you know, bringing in business to that man. He was paying me decent. I didn't need that extra. So you got to listen to the Lord. <clears throat> um, you know, you think you you see people out there with. Uh, you know, it looks like they've got it all. You know, 
big place, a lot of land, uh, and I guess a lot of horses, cattle, <laughs> during the cowboy. I mean, and you, and you, you envy people like that, but you know, in the corporate world, what you don't see, because that looks so good, I mean, the big three-story house or whatever, and 100 acres and whatever, and, but you don't see them working 60 hours each or 70 hours each, the man and the wife. You don't see the kids sitting at the house by themselves because parents aren't around because they got to pay for all this stuff somehow. And that's what the world don't show you. They, they say, you need this. You need this. Your status will go up because you, you've got all this. And that stuff goes away. That's not true happiness. Happiness is being content with what you have. Whether it's little. He says if, if you're faithful with the little, he'll bless you with more. And if you're faithful with that, he'll bless you with a little more. And man, have we seen that since we got into full-time ministry. She walked away from a successful chiropractic college or not college, her career, that we never would have walked away from. Because we had a nice house, was living good, taking a lot of trips, just living it up. You know, she was a doctor. And, but God, when he called us to ministry, we walked away from all that. And we still travel, except we're going to do mission work. Still playing music, still singing. Didn't lose anything. Gained. Amen. We gained. Right. But so many times we hang on to that what we have. And, and he taught me this too. We had a savings account and the bills were coming due. And you know, we were still hustling and doing it. I was trimming a few trees and just trying to make and Mel was like, We're gonna run out of you know our savings. We only got so much in there. And then God like spoke to me and said, Are you putting your faith and hope and trust in that little pile of money y'all got over there? That could be gone like that? Are you gonna put it in me, your provider? And when he got that through my head, I, I could sleep better at night, knowing, Amen. Roy, you just do what you know to do, and he'll do the rest. And that's so true. I've seen it happen. I knew a couple one time that we went to church with. They did a, a Dave Ramsey um, financial peace thing. And after the, we had to do a budget, and I remember her telling, I said, yeah, we, I did our budget, and we can make it as long as we don't tithe. <laughs> and I was thinking that's what you need to do first I think that's supposed to be at the top of the list but they said we can make it as long as we don't tithe and I watched them people because outsider looking in I, I was prideful back then that's for the Lord knocked my feet out from under me they were constantly fixing flat tires replacing their washer and dryer this was going out new microwave they were spending that money You're going to get rid of it. You, and if, but if, not saying if you're, you're tithing and being faithful that that stuff won't happen, but it happens less, I believe. And when you need tires, hey, man, I got these tires over You know anybody needs any tires? What size are they? So, so, so. Man, I, I fit my truck. Man, I just pulled them off. I've got some mud tires. I don't even need these tires. You got them free or a hundred bucks. Whatever. That stuff happens. Get back on track here. How we doing? We got a good time here. Serving others brings happiness. You know, sometimes we say, well, I don't have time to, you know, you see your neighbor over there working on his fence or something. Man, you get that gut feeling, I, I should help him. But I, I got my own stuff I got to do. If you'll stop and just go help, you didn't lose that two or three hours it took to help him, you will gain that time. And it's that's a that's a good lesson to apply to yourself. Because that's being Christ centered, not self centered. And God has a plan for each one of you. A plan and a purpose to live a life more abundantly. You know, Philippians four four says, Rejoice in the Lord, and again I say rejoice. And Nehemiah eight ten says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Happy is he who puts his trust in the Lord, Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. And blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is in the Lord. So don't distrust the Lord. 
but really have your trust in Him. And rejoice knowing you have a promise from the Lord God. No person's ever turned away from God and found true hope, healing, and happiness. Right. He, I was thinking, Jonah, I just keep thinking about Jonah, how he was hiding from God. You ever tried to hide from God? Or think you're hiding from God? It's like, God can't, I know He can't see me doing this. Or he can't. I can't believe people, we even think that at times. But it's like, we'll sin or do a little something and well, nobody will find out. Well, they, God already knows. He knew it before you did. So you're not fooling nobody. There was a, there was a, we were living at our uh, cabin there in Benton, our cabin 3H. It's a log, it's a three three level log cabin. I always wanted a log house when I was a kid. I always wanted a log cabin. I never dreamed it would be on the side of I-30, <laughs> right there on the service road in Benton, Arkansas. But God provided a log cabin because we was gonna put our chiropractic clinic in there, and that's when her uh, arthritis really started affecting her and she couldn't work like she was and we ended up just walking away from that practice and then God laid on our hearts to really focus on ministry and doing that full time but anyway we were living there in the basement of it and I had a brand new steel chainsaw about $600 sold I was out there trimming up some little tree little bushes because I was making a little place to stack some firewood and got sidetracked or whatever and set it down and by my truck and anyway just forgot about it really and then went to bed well the next morning I was going it was turkey season opening day and the year before I had went down uh, in front of my parents house which was about 25 miles away because that's where back when I was growing up there was no deer leases or anything it was just a, there was no gates and you could just hunt anywhere you know timber company land or whatever but since then they've leased all this land up and there's gates on down the road, but on this one patch of property, you could get in there without going through a, a gate. And I knew somebody else had leased, but at the time I wasn't really conscious about it. And I'd seen some turkey tracks in there, so I went in there that morning and killed a big old gobbler. So the next year, when it was opening day, I still didn't have a place to go, and Melanie said, where are you gonna go hunting in the morning? I said, I guess I'll go down there in front of mom and dad's. But he said, well, that's not, Ain't that leased up? I said, yeah, but there's no gate. You know, that little road I go in. I'm parked down there in the woods. Nobody sees me. So I get up that morning. I go out there in the parking lot. And I start putting my hunting stuff in the back of my, of my truck. In the, in the back seat. And I looked in the floorboard and that saw wasn't in there. And that's where I kept it. In the floorboard. I'm like, where'd my saw at? I got to looking around everywhere because then I remembered I had it out there, you know, cutting that stuff. So I went over and looked around, couldn't find it. I went back in, the, looked in the other rooms, couldn't find it. I went, like, they stole my saw. Boy, I was getting, I was mad. But I said, well, I've got to go, you know, it's going to be daylight here pretty soon. So I get in the truck, hit the freeway, and I got to go like four miles down to my exit. I'm stewing on that, and it was like I looked over, and the Lord was sitting in my passenger seat of my truck. He said, "Man, they took your saw, didn't they?" I said, "Yeah, they did." He said, "You mad, aren't you?" I said, "Yeah, I'm mad." He's like, "That's horrible. Come on your property and took something that didn't belong to them." I said, "I know." He said, I'm "Mad." I said, "That's six hundred dollars." He's like, "I know." Now, where are you going hunting that this morning? <laughs> I'm like, well, that's different. <laughs> and I, I'm serious. It's like he was sitting there talking to me. He said, there's no difference. You're going to somebody else's property. I hit my blinker, took the exit like I was going, and whipped right back, got on the freeway and went back. And I walked in there and got in bed, and she said, what are you doing back? I said, I'll tell you when we get up. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that brought me happiness because the Lord cared that much about me yeah. 
even though it was a turkey hunt, you know, who cares? Chainsaw, who cares? But he cared enough to speak to me and reassure me that he was he was with me. And that brings me happiness. When I get scolded by the Lord, I like that. So I'm going to ask you tonight, do you know Christ as your personal Savior? Not are you a member of the church. Not have you said a prayer. But do you know Him as your Savior? And does He know you? Because right. a lot of times we say we know Him. I know Garth Brooks. But He don't know me. Do you really know Him? Does He know you? Do you have that close relationship? Do you speak to Him every day? Do you get in His Word and hear from Him? Because you can't have happiness in the Lord if you don't know Him. And you can't have a close personal relationship with Him if you don't know Him. So I'm going to ask you, if you haven't given your life to Him, make that decision to time. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath, really. And you're like, well, I'll wait till in the morning. I'll, 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 I'll do it in the morning. I'll, talk, I'll come down and talk to Pastor Dusty and we'll get that right in the morning. A lot of times morning don't come. So don't ever put that off. If you feel God tugging at you, and it may be a re rededication. You, you, you may have used to be close to the Lord and had that relationship. And, but you let little things, anger, jealousy, whatever, whatever it is that separates you from God. You, you should let distance get in between you. And you don't have that close personal relationship anymore. Maybe you need to renew that. Just come to this altar and say, God, I have let stuff get in between us. And I, I am so sorry. If you'll forgive me and accept me back as in true fellowship, I'll start living for you again. And he's he's here waiting. Terry, you wanna come up and just play a little something on the guitar? Just maybe just play some instrumental. Like I said. I'll never get up and speak and not give people a chance to get right with the Lord. Amen. I won't, I, and I won't ever tell you, well, you got tomorrow. No. You know, wait, wait till later. You know, there ain't no need to do it at night. You know, we're all full and heard some music. We're ready to go home. It's cold. I'll never tell you to wait. But I will tell you to not wait. If you feel him tugging, this altar is for you. Or if you just want to, if you got somebody in your life that you know God's brought to your attention that you know they're they're out of fellowship, and you could be that person that could lead them back to the Lord. That's what's cool about this arena out here. You heard him talk about his family, his whole family has come to the Lord. About some dirt, four-legged animal standing out there in the dirt has brought people to the Lord. <laughs> That's beautiful. So Dusty, if you want to come forward, Katrina maybe, if there's a lady you want to come pray with, but maybe there's somebody that you know that's not walking close to the Lord. You just want to come up here and pray for them. God hears our prayers. I'm going to do you a song tomorrow night. It's called Thank You for Praying that I wrote for Melanie. She prayed for me, prayed for me. And I was running just as fast as I could go the other direction. But she never quit praying. And I told you she took my name off her prayer board and turned me over to the Lord. And he, he, got me, he got me pretty quick after that. But don't quit praying for people. Even if you get tired of it. And you say they're never gonna come to come to their senses. They're never gonna get right. If you feel that way, you're probably right. 
But if you feel like there's a chance they will and God can get them, then you're right. He can. So we'll just have a moment of... I'm going to ask everybody to stand. I want everybody to stand. Maybe you just want to come to this altar. There's something powerful about this altar. When you come up here and get on your knees before the Lord, He loves that. kids. You remember when they were little? Daddy, hold me. That's what he wants us to do. He wants you to come up here and say, Daddy, hold me. Love me. I'm going to get the altar. That's why I got him up here playing. I'm going to get my wife by the hand. We're going to get up here and we're going to pray. Gonna pray for our marriage. This is a revival. Exactly. If there's distance between you and your wife, I encourage you to get up here in this altar and say, God, restore our love again. Whatever it is between us, pull that out of the way. This is your time.
Sounds good, is he? Yeah. Well, I, I talked to Dusty about his back. And you know, sometimes God's healing comes in different ways. Like Paul said, you know, he, he wanted to be healed of his affliction. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And Dusty understands that. He knows that God's grace is sufficient. But if you've ever had back pain, it don't hurt. It don't hurt to ask. And God wants us to ask. Every time. Don't ever think, well, that's, that's just my wrist hurts. Lord, that's not worth asking you to help me with. He wants you to ask him about everything. So don't ever, don't ever rob yourself of God's blessings because he, he just wants you to speak to him. Just talk to him like you, like your own kinfolk. But it's been a been a great three days. I hope hope, healing and happiness is instilled in you and, and you, you just commit your life to Christ fully, honoring with everything you say and do, and be a light out in the dark world. Because people need to see the light. Don't blend in with them. It's, that's too easy to do. But stand out. Make the hard decisions and the decisions to do right and live right and speak right. And be, be that light that draws the lost. Thank you for giving us the night to speak. Potluck tomorrow and pie tomorrow night. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Give it all hand for the Eubanks. They got a brand new CD. They got some of their other CDs and some of their cups. Just they'd love to visit with you, I know. And uh, if you want to take part of part of them home with you, you can. And she'll they probably sell have... Terry for a dime. <laughs> they can have Emma. She can sweep and do dishes. You can have Emma. Eyes bitter. <laughs> They're auctioneer. Randy, y'all auctioneer, Frank. The auctioneer. We'll auction her tomorrow morning. How about that? With that purple shirt. <laughs> I let her wear my shirt. I thank y'all for being here. May God bless you. Give you safe travels home. I'll, I'll dismiss this, I guess. You got any announcements? Any announcements? Announcements? about the time change tomorrow. Time change. Springs forward. You want me to dismiss us? Or, why don't you dismiss us in prayer back there? Now you with brown hat. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go, Lord. Lord, we are so thankful for the last three nights we've had and just uh, the glory that you shared with us, Lord, and just the ability to come before you and just have those things, hope and happiness. And, my gosh, Lord, you're, thank you for Roy and Melanie and just bringing them here, Lord, the music he provided and the message and the words and just really the honesty that they had. And uh, there's folks here that need healing as well, Lord. Amen. And I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for getting that rock out of my boot the first night. Amen. Lord, I thank you for Amen. That. I just thank you for the Eubanks. I am so fired up about yes. tomorrow, Lord. Yes. And we can't wait to get here again. Thank you for the food. Just thank you for all the people that prepared it and brought it in, Lord. Yes. And we just are uh, going to continue to do your will. And I thank you for Barnett and Cowboy Church. I thank you for our pastor, and Katrina. I just thank you for the love they have for you and just keeping all of us here on the straight and narrow through them. And yes. We do it through Jesus. Yes. And that's the only way. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.